Hello there, channel members, friends, and followers from around the world. This is Q8 Pilot, your host for tonight's show. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we are in another X-Plane 12 stream. And uh, we are going to be flying today a real-world British Airways flight 363 service from Charles de Gaulle in France to London Heathrow. X-Plane has been updated to Beta 3 and uh, they've uh, added a few fixes and uh, unfortunately nothing to do with the clouds or performance uh, but nonetheless we are now on beta 3 and the scenery that you're seeing here on the screen is that of time models uh, charles de gaulle for x-plane 12 one of the first uh, payware airports for x-plane 12 so oh <coughs> for the channel and the community Thank you very, very much. Uh, Carl Childler, Childers just uh, came in with a $50 donation. Carl, thank you so very much, my friend. I appreciate it. That's very, very kind of you. Just uh, super chatted $50. Thank you very much. Uh, I really uh, am speechless. I don't know what to say. Thank you very much, sir. You're very kind. Thank you. Uh, sell, sell, hello, my friend. Thanks, Q8, for your video about x 12 settings. I based on your knowledge uh, to set up my laptop. I'm glad that it helped. And we have also uh, Jeswix132. Uh, can we get a wing view? Of course we can. We will do all of that uh, in due course. Uh, Benny, Benny has been a member with us for 16 months. Gee, time flies. And thank you very much uh, for your continued support. Ryan, welcome aboard, my friend. Thank you for your support. Ali Brahimi, welcome aboard, my friend. Glad to have you with us in this live stream. The, uh, the airport is actually a very nice airport uh, by Thai models. It's, uh, again, very good on performance. Uh, it's quite detailed. I love the, the buildings. I love all the chetways that he's put there. And uh, just really a beautiful rendition of Charles de Gaulle. All the terminals and the buildings have been modeled here, as you can see. Uh, just really a beautiful. It's a huge airport. And uh, we're going to be departing runway 27 left, which is right there. So I decided to place the aircraft somewhere in the other in terminal one, uh, rather than in the main terminal here. But it actually looks very nice. It's a very, very nice airport. And uh, it's about $28, I believe. And uh, if you like flying out of uh, Charles de Gaulle, that's uh, definitely an airport that I recommend. Uh, very nice scenery here. We can take a look again at the buildings. A nice use of PBR and reflective materials. All the roads around the airport have been modeled. Very nice airport clutter as well. And overall, just really a very nice ambience of the, of the airport. If we go back here to our Tolis A321, and I, this is actually happens to be one of my <laughs> favorite aircraft for uh, X-Plane 12. It's an aircraft I think is very well made by Tolis, uh, both inside and out. And of course, in terms of the depth of system simulation, it is uh, one of the finest uh, add-ons, I think, for X-Plane uh, 11 and now X-Plane 12. Uh, if you already have the Tolis A321 for X-Plane 11, uh, I believe uh, there is a $10 charge for the upgrade to X-Plane 12, uh, and I think that's okay. That's a reasonable ask for the effort uh, put in by the developers. We have with us also today ATC Swede. Cheers from Sweden. Welcome aboard, my friend. Glad to have you with us. Volker Frank, welcome, my friend. <coughs> Glad to have you. We have you today from Frankfurt, Germany. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much for being here. Omari, thank you very much for being here, for your support and for your friendship. I appreciate it. And we have, ladies and gentlemen, Rand Cooley, my long time friend. Welcome aboard, my friend. Glad to have you with us. There is a wind in Mubashir. Close uh, the window or something. <laughs> That's the uh, FS Realistic. That's what's causing the sounds that you're hearing as part of the airport ambience. Now, today, uh, first of all, before we actually begin, uh, I want to show you guys the cockpit of the Tolis <clears throat> A321. And I am quite puzzled and perplexed as to why Tolis hasn't done the same for their A340. Uh, this, you know, the cockpit textures on the A320 is outstanding, just really beautiful. 
<clears throat> excuse me, beautiful texturing all around, very high resolution, very crisp, and wherever you look, you really get the feel of the Airbus uh, cockpit. So uh, maybe the, the guy who used to work on textures is no longer with them, uh, but this is really nice. I really like the A321 a lot from, from the both the inside and out. All right, so today also, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be using SAM uh, ground services. Uh, so we are going to look at, uh, we can bring it up here. So this is uh, SAM, and I like the fact that SAM integrates uh, with SimBrief, and we already have a SimBrief flight uh, filed uh, for our flight today, British Airways 323, not 36, 323. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and download uh, from SimBrief uh, all the flight plan and all the details. And now, as you can see, we have uh, the flight uh, from Charles de Gaulle, Lima, Foxtrot, Papa, Gulf, uh, wind zero zero. That's always the case with uh, <clears throat> with the uh, with Sam. I guess it's still not integrated uh, properly with the uh, X-plane. We're departing runway two seven left again. The wind information is not there. Current position is whiskey zero five. Flight number British Airways three two three, and cruise altitude. I'm gonna get from is twenty twenty thousand feet. Yeah, twenty thousand feet. Uh, okay, so we're going to go ahead and say start pre-flight, and as you can see, we now have the ground power enabled, and we're going to say jetway, and it will automatically put the weight of the passengers. Uh, we can, by the way, select catering, cleaning. Uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and select catering so you guys can take a look. Uh, we have our cargo and fuel set. I'm just going to verify the fuel here real quick. That is, is the correct. It is correct. Uh, we can also ask for the crew shuttle to come. Uh, we don't need them because we have we are at the gate. There is just a, a van that drives up to the aircraft. It's static. It's, it doesn't look very good, but, you know, it's there. And we're just going to say load. Now we can fast track this uh, depending on how fast we want to, uh, you know, get on board the flight. But uh, let's go to the outside and just show you what uh, Sam does. And uh, we can see a little bit of stuttering there, but that's okay. Um, I think the, the models actually look very nice. Uh, you can see the guy, actually, the animation is not bad. I like the animation, again, on the fuel truck here, as you can see the baggage is being loaded uh, on the aircraft, and the catering truck is in position, as well as the fuel truck. All right, we're going to go ahead, and I'm not sure why the aircraft is shaking, but here's what we can do. Uh, it must be the ground services. All right, battery one, battery two. And we're going to bring up external power. <coughs> Crew supply is on and ground control is on. We're going to go to the ideas and set it to nav mode. Nav mode is set. And we're going to arm the... Um, we're going to arm... Let us me just see here. All right. So we're going to arm the emergency lights. Uh, the non-smoking sign can go on. And we're going to turn on the nav lights. Let's go ahead and turn on the uh, fuel pumps as well and uh, we can now go to the displays and just to you know bring up a little more lights here so we can see what's going on the aircraft is performing the self-test as we speak and uh, yeah we can bring up all the lights just really lovely work on the uh, on the Tolis A321 and the texturing is is just done to a very high standard it makes the aircraft look really really good and so hopefully they'll bring up the same fidelity to their A340. And all right, so we can brighten up the McDo's as well. And the displays on this side right there and right down here and right there. Perfect. So our ND displays, ECAMs, everything is now properly illuminated. And now we can start programming the McDo. And uh, we have with us uh, Jane Lauren. Hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. Glad to have you with us. Is there any update for Sam? Yes, it is. Uh, there is an update to make it X-Plane 12 compatible, but it's not fully compatible yet. So there are a few things that still do not work properly, uh, but I hope they are working on a fix for some of those issues. Raul, good afternoon, my friend. Welcome aboard. Glad to have you with us. And uh, all right, so we can bring up the McDo. By the way, if we take a look here at the ground services, so things are still being loaded. Catering is still being uh, taken care of here at uh, Charles de Gaulle. Lovely, uh, uh, you know, the, the actual graphics uh, are much more improved 
in uh, this version of uh, x -Plane. You can see also the catering guy going in and out. So really, they improved the animations in this version as well, in the latest version of Sam. So I, I really do like it a lot. Uh, yeah, all right, so we're going to go back to the Mukdu. Now, they do not have the SimBrief integration uh, like we've seen uh, yesterday, or is it yesterday or the day before, on the... Uh, <clears throat> um, uh, on the McDo, you you don't have the SimBrief integration, so we're going to have to do things. Or, what is going on? She, what is that? That's very strange. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see here. Let me go to Sam, and we might let's just say fast track. Hello, Captain. Ground service is finished. All right, ground service finished, but the aircraft is uh, not finished. What is happening here? Gee. What in the world is that? All right, I'll tell you what, guys, we're not going to waste too much time. I'm just going to go... Uh, sh uh, we're we're going to go to the just uh, nearest position to the aircraft. We're going to load it up again and uh, just start things over because this looks really strange. Uh, it must be a bug with Sam or something like that. So you've seen Sam. It looks like it still needs a little bit of work. I've done several flights with it. Never had any issues. But uh, it seems like there is an issue with something. And I'm not sure what exactly that is. But all right. I think we're good here. Looks like the second jetway is coming to the aircraft. And uh, let's start things up again. All right. We can just hide this here. All right. Let's go to battery one, battery two, external power, cruise supply, ground control, and it adheres to nav mode. The um, emergency lights on. And we're going to turn on the non smoking seatbelt signs on. And we're going to turn on the fuel pumps as well. Just finish up with the uh, overhead panel and bring up our lights here again uh, on the displays there we go perfect and uh, brighten up our mcdo's once more lower and upper ecams uh, also while this uh, self-test is taking place and we're gonna go to the other side as well and uh, brighten up the displays here perfect all right so before we do anything else, we're going to go to the TOLUS control panel. We're going to go to the loading the performance. Now, if I look here at the SimBrief plan, we have 186 passengers. Uh, so it's already everything's already loaded. So apply these loads. And for the fuel, <clears throat> we're going to need 6.3. So I'm going to set this to 6.4. Quick refuel, defuel, that's done and uh, let's see external powers there all right so we're good to go here we're going to go ahead and program the mcdo perfect so we didn't make waste too much time but uh, why is this not wanting to move all right perfect we're going to go to the init page we are going to depart today lima foxtrot papa golf to echo golf lima lima london heathrow airport we are today British Airways um, flight 323, three, and this is a real-world British Airways flight. The cost index for our flight today, ladies and gentlemen, is 5, and we're going to be cruising at 20,000 feet, 200, and that is set, align IRS, and uh, that is it. All right, perfect. Now we're going to go to the zero fuel, and for that we're going to need the TOLUS control panel once more. Uh, so we're going to bring it here, we're going to go to the loading performance, and as you can see, zero fuel is 68.0868, six, uh, and let's see, center fuel, center of gravity is 43.6%, uh, so 436 why is this looking strange? All right, let's bring it here. All right, that's better. 60, 
So 27. All right. I, I thought something was off. All right. 27. And we enter that here. Block fuel is 6.4. 6.4. And we put that there, and now we have all the information. It's, by the way, the very short flight today to uh, uh, to London Heathrow. <clears throat> hey, John. John Mark, welcome aboard, my friend. Glad to have you with us. And, uh, all right, so everything is good, looking good here. Let's go to our flight plan. And today we're going to be departing uh, runway 27 left. Uh, 27 left is selected. And the departure said... Uh, for the flight today is going to be the um, the Opal 5 Alpha which is Opal 5 Alpha which is this one here and uh, there are no transitions there so we're going to insert that and let's uh, let's go ahead and select the flaps here all right so out of CG limits I thought that it was going to tell us that so maybe I'll play with the cargo a little bit. Uh, okay, we're going to go to London Heathrow and select the arrival at London Heathrow, which is going to be through runway 27 left. And the star is the Alice uh, One Hotel, which is this one, Alice One Hotel. And do we have a transition? Let me check the flight plan real quick and see if there is a transition. It's the uh, Bravo India Golf transition and we're going to insert that and now if we go to the flight plan we <clears throat> yeah it's not going to like this until we fix maybe the number of passengers uh, cargo and you see that all right that's much better now we have all our speeds and uh, everything there. So, but we need to uh, change these values a little bit. So, let's go to the next page. All right. So, 65.8, 65.8, and we have also 26.7. All right. That's much better. All right. So now we're good, and we can now go to the performance page. And as you can see, we have all the information we need to enter uh, here from the uh, tallest control panel. So we're going to select 144 for our V1, 144 for V2, and uh, sorry, V rotate, and V2 is 147. Transition altitude is 5,000 feet. And we're going to be doing flaps 1 up 0 0.2, flaps 1, and up 0 0.2. 0 0.2 set. Flex temperature today is 60. So we're going to enter that here. And we are done. Perfect. So we are done with the control panel now for the time being. We can put this away. Let's go ahead and start the APU. And uh, everything else here looks good. Perfect. All right. Uh, this look, looks like APU door isn't open yet. It is now. All right. APU is now starting. Excellent. And uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the weather for departure today. So the weather for the departure, guys, is going to be 360-14 knot wind, uh, cloud and visibility okay, 19 degrees Celsius, 1011 is uh, the Q&H 1011, and 1011 on the first officer's side, and all is looking good. Perfect. All right, let's make sure we turn on our radios on both sides. Radios are on, and the APU is still starting. Okay, perfect. Uh, hey, Fred, welcome aboard, my friend. Glad to have you with us. Uh, you can just press the uplink. It didn't work uh, on the A321. Uh, sorry. So, um, so yeah, it, it didn't work for the A321 for some reason. Uh, at least on my uh, on my setup, it didn't work. So I decided to just leave it. And, uh, yeah, we have alignment in three minutes, and we have the APU available. So APU bleed is on. External power is off. And uh, we can now uh, simply remove the ground elements. So we're going to go to... 
the TOLUS control panel, go to ground services. We are going to remove, uh, let me see, is the parking brake set? Yeah, parking brake is set. We're going to remove the chocks, and we want to remove external power, but it doesn't want to remove, it looks like. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and turn on our beacon lights, and that will automatically turn off external power. And once you do that, if you have SAM, you'll see that the jetways are now being driven away from the aircraft, and all the aircraft doors and exits are being closed, as you can see here. And that is all automatic, so you don't really have to do anything for this to work. And the last one will also close on its own. We'll check it out in just a minute here. Let's just make sure that we have IRS alignment. Our IRS alignment is in one minute from now. What we can do is we can call the pushback truck in order to get us out of our position. Sam Place 202, welcome aboard, my friend. Steve, welcome aboard, my friend. Glad to have you with us. And we have also Arc Flight. Good evening to you, my friend. Glad to have you on board uh, this live stream. And uh, we are ready to push out of our position. We're going to set our cruise altitude to the final cruise altitude of 20,000 feet today. Very short flight. Uh, about 39 minutes uh, to London Heathrow and this is by the way a real-world flight on the A321 Robert hello my friend Niels welcome aboard glad to have you with us blue skies to you my friend all right so we are good here let's uh, do shift and G and we're just gonna do straight I don't think it took that all right now now it took it all right Perfect. Let's see if the uh, pushback truck is coming. Um, <clears throat> I still don't see anything here. And uh, B1 Simulations is in the house and just gifted 10 memberships for you guys. Oh, thank you very much, sir. That is very, very kind of you. Thank you so very much, uh, V1. Uh, guys, uh, V1 Simulations is a real-world captain. He's an accomplished instructor as well, and an excellent uh, content creator on YouTube. Uh, please give it up to uh, V1 Simulations, and uh, please do thank him uh, for... If, you, if you've been just gifted a membership, please do thank him for his, uh, for his kindness and his support. And Mika is with us in the house, uh, and if you are not subscribed to V1, uh, please head over to his channel and give him a few hundred likes and subscribes. Uh, he really does create excellent content. Um, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, V1 Simulations. Uh, very kind of you, sir. Thank you for your support and for your kind words always. Uh, I really appreciate it very much. Um, the um, LFPG scenery is uh, that of Thai models, and uh, I highly recommend it. It's, it's just really a beautiful uh, scene. It looks like the pushback truck was taking its time, and it's finally here. Uh, looks like maybe he was stopping for coffee or something. And ladies and gentlemen, we have Oki Sim, or Aki Sim, just became a VVIP member here at the Q8 Pilot Channel. Thank you very much, my friend. Good evening to you, Crunchwrap69. Welcome aboard, my friend. Thank you very much uh, again, guys. Uh, very, very nice of you. Yeah, yeah, he is just... Uh, V1 is, is an excellent uh, instructor. And uh, the way he explained things is just... Uh, I, I just absolutely love it. He's, he's an excellent content creator. So... Uh, all right, looks like this is a pushback truck, and I'm sure we have uh, iris alignment by now. Uh, but this guy, I, I think he was probably stopping for a coffee. That's my hunch. Uh, so here we are. We are set. We're ready to go. And ooh, he's almost going to break the uh, the nose gear there. It's going too fast. Commencing pushback. Release parking brake. All right, parking brake released. And there we go. That's our pushback from our position here at Charles de Gaulle Airport. Uh, beautiful scenery laid by Thai models. Uh, I, I really like it a lot. Very, very detailed scenery. And it looks very, very good indeed. 
All right, we can go ahead and start our engines. Engine mode selector to start, and we're going to start with engine number two. Engine number two is now starting. Disconnect. Pushback completed. All right, looks like he decided that he wants to stop the pushback here, so that's okay. All right. We can now turn on the, let's see here. Still have the engine starting. There we go. Just look at that beautiful wing view. Amazing. Looks like overcast conditions here at uh, Charles de Gaulle. Yeah, those IAE engines are just phenomenal. Okay, we have a good start on engine number two. Let's go and start engine number one. Just look at the beautiful texturing of the uh, Tolis A321 and the engines too. Q8, uh, Q8 probably is the better pushback for it, it. No, it doesn't. Uh, unfortunately, Jack, after beta 2, it's just completely stopped working. So uh, it needs an update. All right, runway turn off lights are on, taxi lights are on. And we can leave the rest of the lights. Beacon is on. Yeah, it looked like it was off. We have a good start on both engines now. There we go. Or we're just waiting for the uh, engine number two, or engine number one, beg your pardon. We're gonna set the transponder code to, code to TARA. And we're gonna set flaps one for departure. We're gonna arm the speed brakes and set the auto brake to max. All right, nice sounds. All right, flaps reset. Perfect. All right, we have a good start now. Engine mode selector back to the off position. And the APU bleed is off. APU master is off. And uh, we are good to go. We're going to set this on flight plan. And we're going to set this here to performance. So that's the takeoff information. And uh, we are now, ladies and gentlemen, good to go. All right, let's do the flight control check. Oops. Pull up. There, we can see it there. And pull down. And pull right. Pull left. And we're good. All right, let's release the parking brake. Parking brake is uh, released now. And let's go. A little bit of uh, stuttering still with uh, with X-Plane. Uh, nothing too bad, and, and this is uh, again expected with the, with the beta, um, so I'm not too concerned about that. I'm sure this will be fixed in due course. But uh, one thing we need to check is, yeah, we can go all the way. Guys, just look at the water splash here on the on the uh, on the taxiway just look at that that is very very cool you have got to love that very nice indeed All right, we're taxiway Foxtrot, and uh, we're gonna go all the way to the end and then make the turn for runway two, uh, seven. 
Uh, let's do cabin crew. Alright, and uh, take off config. No blues. We are good to go. Excellent. Sounds are indeed very good. And and I, I wonder why, again, we don't have the same quality of textures in the A340, uh, which is kind of strange. By the way, I don't think it is raining in Charles de Gaulle right now, but uh, it looks like the runways are wet uh, and everything seems to be, you know, wet at this point. Not sure why. Maybe it was raining earlier. Again, look at the uh, look at the grass here. In uh, let me just go to the outside view once more. Just look at the uh, nice vegetation in this uh, in this airport. See the grass here? That looks very nice. Man, this looks really good. Really, really good. And again, guys, once we have start having the uh, Payware airports uh, for um, for X-Plane 12, uh, you know, things, things will get even better. But uh, I actually, uh, I looked at uh, London Heathrow, the default airport, actually doesn't look bad at all. All right, let's go ahead and turn on our landing lights. And strobe lights to the on position, wing lights, and nose light to take off, and uh, we are good to go. All right, here we go. Runway two seven left for departure today. Runway ahead, very nice. Even the ground markings are done so well. Uh, on on this rendition of uh, Charles de Gaulle for X-Plane 12. And by the way, this is not an upgrade from the previous version. This is a brand new version for X-Plane 12. All right, here we go. That's runway 27 left. Jack R, welcome aboard, my friend. Glad to have you with us. Thank you for your continued support here on the Q8 Pilot channel. I truly, truly appreciate it. Matt Johnson, welcome aboard, my friend. Glad to have you with us and thank you for your continued support. Being a, a VVIP member of the channel, I really appreciate it. We're going to start the clock and uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are cleared for takeoff. Runway 27 left. Let's go. All right, engines are stable. Man flex, SRS, and runway. Like it is raining, speed check flaps up, but we didn't get anything on the. Well, I think the the rain has to be of certain rate in order to see it actually on the uh, on the windows or on the windshield. All 
right? Climb thrust is set. And we're going to go to autopilot one is engaged. We're going to disarm the spoilers. Very nice indeed. Just uh, look at the overcast conditions here uh, as we climb to uh, 20,000 feet. This is just our range here. Now we're going through the clouds. Good idea to turn on our, uh, no that's not it, <laughs> uh, our engine anti-ice, right, Q and H, standard, on both sides, and we continue our climb, what is it complaining about? All right, we continue now our climb, folks, to uh, 20,000 feet. Just look at the cockpit. I mean, it looks fantastic, um, as opposed to, you know, the A340, which kind of looks weird, but this one, I mean, just look at the overhead panel. Just the texturing is uh, just outstanding in the uh, in the tolis. Even the cabin is is very well modeled. So if you can actually come here, um, here just let me show you here. So you've got a, actually a nice passenger cabin, unlike the A340. So it's it's pretty reasonable. Nice lighting. Yeah. I do like it. I do like the Tolis a lot. Alright, we're approaching 10,000 feet, folks, so we are going to kill the landing lights, the runway turnoff lights, taxi lights, wing lights are all off, and we're going to keep the uh, engine anti-ice on uh, until we clear, uh, until we clear this uh, thick layer of cloud has imagery uh, imagery included that is why the downloads are large yep yeah, that's exactly right yes and we have with us uh, Riggs just became a subscriber to the channel welcome aboard my friend glad to have you with us as a part of the growing family here on the QA pilot channel any news on release upgrade the A321 on well we are flying is that if you're referring a uh, power sim if you're referring to uh, uh, to the tolis then that's exactly what we're flying it has been released uh, the upgrade fee is ten dollars and uh, it has been released available on the explain or and now we are continuing our climb to 20,000 feet it's, it's by the way it is a very short flight uh, today do not see And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we also want to welcome Abbas uh, Mos Mosey, Abbas Mosey, who just became a subscriber here at the channel. Welcome aboard, my friend. Uh, thank you very much for your subscription. I appreciate it. And uh, here we are. Now we are above the clouds. I think we can go ahead and turn off our wing and engine NTI system and continue the climb. And here is what things look like at uh, this altitude. And we've got the shaped clouds. There's always an issue here uh, in, in some situations. In some situations it's worse uh, than others, but uh, overall, yeah, they definitely need to work this out. But overall, guys, if I compare what I see in X-Plane 12 to X-Plane 11, uh, I think 
really has come a long way, especially at the, you know, the, the airports. The, uh, I mean, we've seen payware airports, we've seen default airports, and they just look absolutely fantastic. The airport environment in general in x 12 has been significantly improved from previous versions, and uh, I think it does uh, provide for a very immersive uh, experience. Some key K Sky, welcome aboard, my friend. Can you check cabin pilot light? I mean, the uh, and I'm not sure what you refer to there. Sorry, MC Crewfish, welcome aboard, my friend. Glad to have you. I'm a saint, welcome aboard. Hello everyone, do you guys recommend Phoenix A320 or Airsoft A324 MSFS? Well, I will definitely give, uh, I'm not sure if the Airsoft released their A320, uh, but the Phoenix is definitely the, the way to go. Hey, Abdullah Abbas, how are you doing my friend? Welcome aboard, TFK Linux Gaming, welcome my friend, glad to have you with us. Do we have a disco? We sure do. Uh, let's go ahead and clear that. Insert. Disco's gone. We are almost at 20,000 feet. And uh, we're going to go to the performance page. And uh, we are going to go to the next phase, next phase, next phase. All right. And we're going to grab the information for our arrival into, uh, into London Heathrow. So we are looking at a QNH of 1013. So, as you can see, it already says enter the destination information 1013, and we stick that here. And the current temperature at London Heathrow, ladies and gentlemen, is 17 Celsius. <coughs> and the wind, uh, so we are going to expect uh, 0104 knot wind, 0104 knot wind, which is not bad. 5,000. Actually, the transition altitude, I believe, at London Heathrow is 6,000. So we're going to enter that here. 6,000. And uh, we're going to just say 250. And we're good there. All right. Perfect. All is set. And the final uh, approach uh, altitude, or the initial approach altitude, is going to be 3,000 feet for runway 27 left at uh, London Heathrow and by the way the top of descent is not too far so if we click here uh, let's see let me check top of descent here that's top of descent not too far from where we are and if we click on performance about 88 nautical miles for top of descent very very short flight uh, into London Heathrow, and this explains the reason why we haven't really cleared to a higher altitude. <clears throat> so, yeah, I think overall, guys, uh, I think the as the add ons start coming for X Plane, uh, I think you know, I'm starting to really enjoy it uh, a lot more than X Plane 11, to be very frank. Uh, it is more immersive. Uh, of course, I do miss a lot of the, uh, you know, excellent GA aircraft in X-Plane, uh, in X-Plane 11. Uh, but hopefully those will be, uh, will be brought into X-Plane 12 in due course. And hopefully it won't take very long. I'm really excited to, uh, to fly the Airfoil Labs Cessna 172NG in uh, X-Plane 12. And I'm really looking forward to installing some um, supported um, Orbex scenery as well. By the way, I've done some orthos uh, for some regions, and they actually look very good. Uh, was it a good decision for Lemonar to release X-Plane 12 in the beta? Some people uh, count the 
current version as a full release, uh, but in fact, it isn't finished. Well, <clears throat> see, MC Crewfish, the, the thing is, people can think whatever they want to think, but I think at Lemonar, the fact is, Lemonar has made it very clear that this is early access. And uh, I think people ought to go and understand what is early access, and if that it's an open beta. So basically, Lemonar is giving everyone the chance to help them fix all the issues. And, and I'll tell you guys why this is very important. In the development, in, in a development environment, it is extremely difficult to simulate every single um, system, uh, every single environment, uh, the setup, how you have configured your, um, you know, your uh, windows or how many updates you have. They cannot really say what effect certain updates will have on certain aspects of the simulation. And so, the open beta is is a chance for the developers to actually iron out all of these issues. And this is quite important because otherwise it's very difficult for them to, you know, buy hundreds of thousands of systems and, you know, test the experience of each user. But now with the open beta, once you sign up for the early access, you are actually acknowledging that you are understanding what early access means and that you uh, want Laminar to benefit from you know your use of the sim and so so I think it's it's a fair it's a fair thing to do and while we're at it if you guys are enjoying this uh, stream I would really appreciate you smashing that like button and if you're not subscribed to the channel uh, click that subscribe button and hit the notification bell button so that you are notified of the latest streams, uh, tutorials, and reviews here on the channel. That is a nice swing view right there, with very nice clouds. Again, the clouds, sometimes they look really, really good, sometimes they look very awful. Uh, but in this particular situation, I think they look pretty good. And uh, they do look good even far in the distance, but there is a little bit of pixelation. So if you look at the far end there of the horizon, you will see that there is a little bit of pixelation there, which I don't like. But hopefully it will be pressed in uh, later versions of uh, X-Plane 12. Exciting time, really. The, the, the color of the sky looks sometimes strange, especially at higher altitudes, but not a not a big deal. Hopefully they'll fix this in upcoming versions. And I'm sure there will be some add-ons for sky colors and things like that. I'm sure that is going to be there for sure. Yeah. We have with us, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Rodriguez from Orlando, Florida. Welcome aboard, my friend. Glad to have you with us. And glad you could join the stream. Frank White, welcome aboard, my friend. Glad to have you with us. And Mike B, thank you very much for being here this evening, sir. Uh, today was, by the way, uh, kind of an off-schedule stream. Uh, I don't normally stream, um, you know, two days in a row. And uh, Thursday is normally not a very good day for me to stream. But it was uh, it was close to 10 p.m. Uh, in Kuwait. And I decided to do... I was actually working on a video for work. And uh, I decided to take a break and say, you know what, let me fire up the Tolus and let's go flying. And then I said, you know what, why don't we just stream it and let you guys have fun and take a look at SAM, ground services, which by the way, have disappointed me. Now, I'm not sure if the issue is with SAM or something else, but you saw what happened to the aircraft in the beginning. And uh, yeah. So let's take a look here, uh, 55 nautical miles for top of descent, uh, we are getting very close to our destination, again a very short flight, approximately 49 minutes of air time uh, from Charles de Gaulle to London Heathrow, and by the way guys, I have no clue how the FBA is going to be at London Heathrow, uh, I haven't tested this flight, so I'm just doing this for the first time with you guys. Trolls are trolls, absolutely. 
Hey, Chris, welcome aboard. I agree, FS-2020 came out as early access. It got uh, shot down too. People need to understand old software these days come out as beta. I'm seeing lots of tubers uh, comparing both. A bit silly. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you guys, um, the, the funny thing is, what I don't understand is, if, if for example, if you like, let's say, you like sim flight simulator something else B, you know not not X plane and not Microsoft Flight Simulator. Why do you spend so much effort and energy going to YouTube channels who are, you know, X plane or Microsoft Flight Simulator or any flight sim other than the one you prefer and like? You take the time, you go to these channels, and then you start, you know. Well, these really strange set of comments I just don't get it I don't understand why would somebody do that other than they've got nothing better to do yeah so yeah I've had my share of those and you know at some point um, I think I've had people who you know attacked me personally um, I, I've had a lot of those uh, a lot of those and, but yeah and, and this was you know partly the reason why I quit for you know, a short period of time, I think it was three months that I just completely pulled and quit. So I said, I'm done. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's very strange that what people go and say, and sometimes they just <laughs> they go overboard with their comments. And that's why we have, you know, the fine gentlemen like Carl and Rand and uh, Omari regulate the channel and make sure that we are in good shape so thank you guys all the moderators thank you very much I don't I know I don't say this uh, often but I really appreciate what you guys do for me uh, so thank you very much really for all the hard work and really keeping everyone in check <laughs> yeah so we continue our flight. We are pretty close now to top of descent, uh, 39, 38 nautical miles. So we should start seeing it here. Yep, that's uh, as you can see here. This is the top of descent. So we are going to reset the MCP altitude to 3,000 feet, and uh, we're just going to wait the top of descent here in approximately 30 nautical miles, and uh, we'll begin our descent towards uh, London Heathrow, our destination uh, today for this live stream. Again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the airport that we departed from is Charles de Gaulle, and the scenery is by Thai models. We are arriving into London Heathrow, which is going to be the default airport, the default London Heathrow by Laminar Research. Um, so I, I don't think Airsoft has uh, graded their, um, uh, they have upgraded their uh, London Heathrow for x 12 yet. Um, Oh, thank you very much, uh, Rand. The, the honor is all mine. Thank you very much. You're very kind. Thank you, my friend. We have, ladies and gentlemen, Sachin Aviation just became a member. Welcome aboard, Sachin. Glad to have you with us. And Bombasa says, I enjoy both sims. X-Plane has just something special that I'm... Uh, uh, you know what? I agree with you. I don't know what that is, but it's definitely got something special. I, I agree. Ladies and gentlemen, we have with us Stan. Stan, welcome aboard. Thank you very much for being here. And uh, thank you for your support, my friend. I appreciate it. And ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Badger, who just joined the stream. Evening to you, my friend. I'm doing very well. I hope you are the same. And uh, hopefully, guys, um, I'm going to be on, on my birthday. Uh, on my birthday stream, which is going to be on September the 25th, I will be also hosting a giveaway. And uh, I think you guys are really going to like what I'm going to offer as a giveaway in the upcoming uh, stream. I'm going to be offering five copies of x 12, courtesy of the QA Pilot channel. Five copies of x 12, in my birthday stream so uh, be sure to uh, mark that on your calendars on the 25th of september which is going to be a sunday so on that week i will probably not stream on saturday and i will uh, stream on sunday uh, 
uh, that would be next week. Next, not this coming Sunday, but the Sunday that follows that. So just uh, be sure to uh, uh, to tune in, and uh, maybe you'll be one of the lucky winners and win a copy of uh, X Plane Twelve. You're the opera of flight sim, <laughs> Mika. Thank you very much. You're very kind, my friend. Thank you. All right. Uh, we are approaching the top of descent now, as you can see, 22 nautical miles. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the outside. And this is what things look like in the outside here. Reasonably well, I think. Not too bad. And, and the cloud, see the cloud in this specific uh, you know, scene, in specific time, and they actually look pretty good. Um, the most important thing is that we're done with the with the 2D, you know, clouds. We're done with those, and those days are over. At least when you take off and you land and you go through the clouds, the cloud smoothing in x 12 is very well done. Very, very well done. Um, but they have to work on the variety of clouds and uh, the shape of clouds. All of that still needs, uh, you know, a little bit of work to make it, you know, perfect, and hopefully we'll have it perfect. They use, by the way, the, the same technology that was used by X Enviro is being used now in x 12, as well as um, Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is generating clouds through noise. And uh, X Enviro, by the way, Q8, I have a lot of respect for you, your genuine, honest, and not many YouTubers behave like you, really admire it. Well, thank you very much, sir. Thank you so very much, Chris, for your kind words. I'm most humbled, my friend. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, we are coming. TFK Linux Gaming, welcome aboard, my friend. Glad to have you with us in this uh, live stream. Thank you very much. And uh, we are now, let's see, let's take a look here. Uh, 11 nautical miles. We have the MCP altitude reset to 3000, and we can quite often take a look at the wing view here. And how about we do a flyby? And you see how things look kind of strange there? But I love this Tolus A321. Fantastic aircraft. And by the way, for that matter, I also like the Tolos A319. I think it's, uh, again, a very well-made aircraft. Uh, same in terms of textures and all that, just a smaller aircraft, but the same fidelity, I think, uh, that you see in the A321, you can find in the A319 as well. Such an aviation, welcome aboard, my friend. Glad to have you with us, and thank you for your subscription to the channel. Hello, I'm doing very well, Captain. I'm doing very well, my friend. And I hope you are the same. Uh, Amr Archives, where are you going to say about... Oh, about X Enviro. So, X Enviro, the team over... Uh, now, X Enviro is, is a product that is developed by uh, Andre and, uh, and Threshold. Well, mainly Magnus, the CEO of Threshold. And by the way, Andre, the creator of X Enviro, has become a real world 737 pilot. And so he is a rated pilot. He flies for one of the airlines. He, he's, a, he's a really a gem of a person. He's a very nice guy. And I hope that he's doing well. Now, they have worked closely with Laminar on the previous version. I'm not sure that they are actually getting the support they need in X -Plane to, for X-Plane 12. But I hope that they do get it, because in my view, at this point in time, I think X Enviro, the way it generates clouds and the environment, uh, more specifically, is because it's an environment engine rather than just weather, um, I think they do it better than X-Plane 12, uh, quite frankly. So I hope that Laminar would provide them with the support they need to, uh, we need to descend. I got carried away there with the uh, right descending. There we go. 
Um, so they definitely need a, a lot of support from Laminar in order to, um, you know, in order to get X Enviro to work with Vulcan and to work with X Plane 12. So hopefully they'll get the support they need. I uh, they do have a Facebook page where you can always check it, make sure you know you can follow the progress of the development. So we'll see what happens. We have Leonardo uh, Godfroy, or Godfroy. Uh, welcome aboard to the QA Pilot channel, uh, sir. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. We we'll have also Rob for Fu, uh, who has just become a subscriber. Uh, welcome, guys, to the channel, and thank you for uh, being here and uh, subscribing to the channel, being part of the Q8 Pilot family on YouTube. I appreciate it. Right, do we have a restriction here? It looks like we do have a restriction at 18,000. Uh, yep, for about 8 nautical miles. Alright, we're descending. Speed is also decreasing. We're looking good. We're a little bit too high, but uh, the aircraft should correct itself. Now this is a very nice looking approach here, very nice looking scene here as we uh, enter into UK airspace. And by the way, for all those of you who are in the UK or the Commonwealth, uh, I offer my deepest condolences on the loss of Queen Elizabeth II. Uh, my heart goes to all of you and uh, her family. A terrible loss, uh, really. Right, we're descending through 16,000 for 3,000. We are looking good. And here's what the terrain looks like. Here, let's switch to external view. And today it's a uh, it's a better time to fly, so you guys can see the terrain. It looks pretty much. You know, kind of like explain, explain 11. I don't think there is a big difference, but uh, I can't wait for Orbex to start supporting explain 12 so that we can see some really nice scenery from Orbex. <laughs> Thank you very much, Carl. <laughs> Thank you very much, Carl. I, I love how you're, uh, you know, you're experimenting with the Arabic. And you're, you're, by the way, you're writing in classical Arabic. Um, that is classical Arabic. So that's like spot on. I got to go jump on a long thing. Uh, no worries at all. Uh, take care, Carl. Uh, stay safe, my friend. We'll see you next time. Thank you very much for your support and for your very generous donation of $50. Take care, my friend. Right, we're down to 14,000 for 3,000. Let's go ahead and turn on the landing system on both sides. And uh, we're going to check here the QNH is 1013. Transition altitude in the UK, specifically in the London area, is 6,000 feet. So we're looking good. Uh, looks like here this is the uh, Bravo India Golf transition and we're still looking pretty good and after the big transition there is the let's see that's the center fix and so that's C, that's, by the way, when you see C, and then 27 left, that's center fix for the runway. And then you'll see F, 
which denotes final fix and uh, yeah let's just uh, all right let's put this back here oh such an aviation says I think we share the same birthday oh that's cool and thank you very much for your super chat Sachin I really appreciate it my friend thank you that's very kind of you it's so hard to live in a world without her she was more than just a queen she was an era uh, yeah that's absolutely right Thank you I very much for your the same birthday. Thank you very much, uh, Sachin, again, and uh, happy birthday in advance to you, my friend. And so that's the center fix, as you can see here. So we should probably begin configuring the aircraft. Let me just take a look here. All right. So what we're going to do at this point is. Uh, going to increase the rate of descent. I think I've done the opposite. So here, let's do that. Now I'm going to extend the speed brakes. All right, we're approaching 10,000 feet. Landing lights are on. And uh, runway takeoff, runway takeoff lights, the taxi lights are on, the wing lights are on, and speed brakes to medium. And let's just the aircraft decel. That is actually, you, you, now this scene actually looks very nice. And uh, we can now check out the cloud smoothing as we go through through uh, these clouds here. Here you can see um, as we pass through the clouds, the cloud smoothing is done very, very well. When is your birthday? Uh, it's September 25th. Thank you, Rand. Alright, we can reduce the rate of uh, descent now to 2,000 feet. Let's go ahead and go to laps one. Laps one is selected. Right, standard barrow, one zero one three. And on this side as well. We can do a replay uh, of our landing once uh, once we are. All right, I think for now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to just go to manage speed again. And we can see that the speed is decreasing now. Looking good. Just look at the uh, again the lighting, the, the sun flares just looks fantastic. All right, let's.
let's uh, inform cabin crew to prepare the aircraft for landing and take their seats. Uh, speed brake is armed. Speed check, flaps two. Excellent. And we have uh, a Sara from France. Welcome aboard, my friend. Eagle One, welcome aboard, my friend. Glad to have you with us. All right, so we are almost there now. We are at uh, 3,000 feet, and uh, looks like approach phase is activated now. And we're going to go ahead and click on the approach. As you can see, Cat One, single. We're just going to allow the aircraft to make its turn. All right, speed check, laps three. And we are going to lower the landing gear. Look at that, guys. Beautiful. Uh, again, you can see the resolution of the cloud of the shadows here. They look very nice. Uh, no long, you no longer need the uh, you know the tweak for X Plane 11. Mertoya, welcome aboard, my friend. Glad to have you with us. Thank you very much for your continued support, my friend, being a VVIP member, and thank you also for uh, your support moderating the channel. Uh, I truly appreciate it. And uh, we are now almost at London Heathrow. Speed check laps full. We kind of configured a bit early, but th that's okay. I don't really know what to expect after the turn, so it's good that we've configured when we did. And uh, we are now inbound, runway 27 left at uh, London Heathrow. <clears throat> I still don't have the runway in sight. sight of the uh, of the wing when the flaps are lowered it just really looks fantastic you didn't see my first message sir please scroll up there you should see oh i'm sorry mertoya my apologies and look at the the lighting it just looks fantastic here through the clouds it looks really really good line slope is active and uh, i still don't have a visual uh, but we're looking good. We're going to disconnect at 1000. We can, by the way, get with Autopilot 2 and test how the Tolis does the auto land. Uh, I've done the auto land in, I've tested the, uh, the A340 and it does it perfectly. Um, so, you know, I think I'm starting to see something that looks like a runway ahead of me. 2500. All right. 2500.
Take care, Sashin. Have a nice day, my friend. I can see the runway now. 27 left is ahead of us now. It's hard to see with the sun directly uh, coming at us, but uh, I can see the runway now. We have the runway in sight. Disconnected and my aircraft. safely here at London Heathrow and it uh, looks like it's raining here so let's uh, bring up the pipers and we'll head over to the terminal well the rain is gone that was short-lived This is, ladies and gentlemen, default Laminar X-Plane 12 London Heathrow. We'll take a look at the airport uh, just a little bit after we uh, do the replay. the APU. Strobes off. Wing lights are off and we can keep the runway. Well, we can, I think, maybe we'll just bring the aircraft to a stop here since there is a stand. So let's do that.
There we go. Beautiful. That's stand five nine zero. And set the parking brake. Welcome to London Heathrow. All right, we can do the replay now. So we're gonna go and hit the R button. And let's see here. There we go, that's good. All right. I just love replays in X-Plane. Generally speaking, it looks just fantastic and uh, very, very immersive as uh, you do, you know, you can actually do plane spotting and it would look exactly like the real thing. Look at that wing flex. That's just brilliant. All right, let's do it again. There right, we go. You have got to love the wing flex on the Tolus. Very nice indeed. Let's do one more wing view. We will do the other side. There we go. Alright folks, we're going to bring up the APU bleed and uh, we can turn off the engines now. Engine number two, engine number one. And uh, what we can do now is take a little bit uh, and look a short look here at the airport. Now, this is ladies and gentlemen, uh, the default London Heathrow Airport by Laminar Research. And as you can see, the airport is very resemblant of London Heathrow. I mean, it's not, it's not high fidelity or anything like that. And it's not exactly what it looks like over at London Heathrow. But it's quite representative. At least the structures are in the right place. Um, again, it's a nice London Heathrow airport to have as a default airport. This is default. So this is uh, no add-ons, nothing. It's just default laminar, uh, laminar uh, research, uh, London Heathrow, and I personally think it looks pretty good. Yeah, not bad at all for a default airport. Just look at that again. Very, very nice details for being a default airport, and uh, yeah, it looks nice. Uh, love the animations there of the trees. Looks very, very nice indeed. All right. Well, uh, folks, uh, this is pretty much it for uh, this uh, live stream. I hope that you've enjoyed uh, the stream as much as I enjoyed streaming it for you. And uh, until next time, please do take care of yourselves and each other. And I will see you all very soon. Thank you very much, Eagle One. And you guys, please do stay safe. And uh, I'll see you probably on Saturday. And please, guys, don't forget... 
that on the 25th of September I will be hosting my birthday stream and I will be giving away five copies of Explain 12 courtesy of the Q8 Pilot channel. Take care folks and good night.